Hey up troops, it's A Littleton here again with another video and this time we're going to be looking at Maverick. It was requested in the comments on the last video so we're going to crack on to it. Now for me Maverick is one of the strongest attackers in the game. He has literally no counter to his utility. He can open any wall, any hatch regardless of the utility that's already on there. Now don't get me wrong, using Maverick's blowtorch is a bit of an art form to it and it's not the simplest thing to just pick up and use but hopefully we can go through a bit today which will give you the skills to be able to use it consistently. Now in the video today we're going to look at how to maverick trick a reinforced wall, how to open a reinforced hatch and how best to use maverick when it comes to nading through reinforcements and making just slight peak holes and lines of sight which are going to be really useful to get kills from. As always there's going to be timestamps in the timeline below so if you want to skip to something have a quick look in the description or have a look along the timeline it should show you what you want to see all being well. As usual, I normally stick this at the end of the video, but I'm going to bang it in at the beginning. If you like the video, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. It costs you absolutely nothing and it makes me day. So cheers. Now for me, in the right hands and with the right skill set, Maverick should be taken almost every round, even if just for his gun and his nades alone, regardless of his utility. But anyway, that's enough of me babbling on. Let's get stuck straight into it. So just to touch on Maverick's loadout quickly, he's actually got one of the best guns on attack, I think. The, the M4 with a 1.5 size. Um, is absolutely crispy. The flash hider and the vert for me, I sometimes run angled, it depends how I'm feeling. The 1.5 for me is spot on as well. Um, he does have the DMR, which is a, is a pretty strong DMR. I don't really like DMRs, to be honest with you. Um, but if you do rock a muzzle break, because that's going to benefit you more. Um, and again, angled or vert is completely up to you. The big thing with Maverick, though, is the frag grenades. The fact that he can cut a hole into the, or burn a hole, whatever you want to say, into the reinforced wall and then throw the grenades over is what makes him unique and what makes him really really useful especially during thatcher bands so yeah just in terms of loadout the m4 for me is is up there in probably the top 10 percent of, of the strongest guns in the game definitely rock that if you want to but yeah these uh his loadout is just is super strong especially with the frags if you ever run a claymore on maverick um don't Okay then, so on to the to the main part people play Maverick for, and that's to Maverick trick a wall, usually. Now, quite often it's this wall on Clubhouse. Obviously, watch your garage run out. I'm going to go through the way I mav the wall and the way some other people mav the wall. Again, it's, it's up to you what you find comfortable and what you find easiest. The key thing is what you want to be doing is making a line from the top left, not right in the corner, just a little bit further down from the left there, making it across to the middle. And then the same again at the bottom from the left hand side across to the middle. Once you've done those two lines at the top and the bottom, that'll make this reinforcement on the left hand side go soft, as in just a soft wall. You can then sledge it or you can book it or you can uh, Zephyr or Ash or whatever it is you want to do. So just going through what to do. Spend when you're doing the left hand side or if you're doing the starting on the right hand side on the right hand side, just spend a little bit more time making your first hole because there's a bit more. I'll, I'll not spend much time on it and I'll show you why you need to. OK, so that's let's just pretend we did that to begin with. You see the um, the metal, the reinforcement is still there on both sides. So you need to make sure you just spend a little bit more time on the side, making sure that that goes all the way through and then make your cut across. Like so, I've missed a bit in the middle there, that's not ideal. Try and keep it as straight as possible. And then when you go to the bottom again, you've got to spend a bit more time there. Don't spend as much time on the bottom as you have done on the top. Because whilst you're prone here, doing the or you're crouched here, doing the, the cut, you, you're going to get somebody peeking you. What I like to do, some people say don't go prone because you can't get up and move away as fast. However, I feel when I'm prone, I can just do the cut in one quick motion and I'm away. Um, when I'm pro when I'm crouching, I take a little bit more time. I don't think the angle's as favorable. Um, but I'll show you what I do when I go prone. So the first thing I'll do is make a, the hole on the left to make sure I'm through, which I am. And then in one motion, I can wait for a new can. I go all the way across without hitting the wall. Kind of weird. There we go. And trying to keep as tight to the wall as you can without getting hit by the, the electric. Now, what you've got to be careful of is you quite often get someone prone just under the CC window there. So you've just got to be careful of that. But there you go. No matter what happens to the wall, whether it's muted, caded, banditted, that Maverick trick will always make any reinforced wall soft so you can breach it with a, uh, as I say, a book, a sledge, a Zofa, an Ash or whatever. The other alternative to get the denial off a wall without Mav tricking it is to make a hole, throw a grenade through and have the grenade destroy the denial on the other side. Now, I don't want to say people do things right and wrong because Siege is subjective. However, I do feel that when people make a hole in the middle... I don't think that's the best way of doing things. So, what I'll show you by this is... When I throw the grenade here, it's going to land on the ceiling, ideally. And then bounce down onto the floor. The only thing with that is, depending on the trajectory at what you throw the grenade at... 
I've seen people throw from here, and because of the grenade um, cursor, as you can see there, is the circle, it doesn't always go exactly where you want it, in my opinion. And I've seen people try and grenade through Maverick holes like this, and it's not gone so well. In my opinion, the best way of doing this, and this is came from a friend who I play with called Rubix Rob, who I saw do it once, and I've done it ever since, and I've never died to grenading a Mav through the wall ever since, is to make a hole in one of the sides. So, like this. Once you've got a hole in the side of the wall instead of the middle of the wall, you're not hoping to, you know, you're not going to catch this on the way in. You can literally bounce it off the side of the wall, and it's obviously with the trajectory going to bounce off there and then land on the inside of the wall. You're not going to hit the outside of the reinforcement. You're not relying on this bit of reinforcement bouncing a grenade back or anything like that. Just bounce it off the wall, and I'll show you what I mean. So just wait for it to cook a tad. And then just bounce it off the wall and on the inside of the denial. And that's both walls gone. For me, that's much safer than, than relying on um, a bit of reinforcement just flicking it back at you. There's a couple of clips that I've got. I'm not going to show you now, <laughs> but where I've died doing that. I highly recommend bouncing it off the wall on the side as well. If you know that the bandit's not tricking, the other thing that you can do, of course, is just make, pop a small hole in the bottom of the reinforcements and look at where the battery is. So let's just, again, ignore this side because we've mav tricked it. But let's just say you can get a drone through here and you know where the, the bandit uh, battery's going to be because you can ping it. You don't even have to mav trick. Just pop a quick hole in the wall and then mav again to destroy the bandit. And that's that done. Obviously, when the thermite or um, whoever it is that's going to breach the wall if you're using hard breach charges, don't stand in front of the hole because you're going to get shot in the knees. If you're using an ace or a banner, it doesn't matter. But yeah, use the... Um, if you know it's a mute, for example, you can burn a hole in the middle. Burn again to get rid of the mute. But that's just another quick way of doing it if you don't want to have the um, Maverick trick. One of the main reasons you're going to want to take Maverick is to open hatches and open electrified hatches. Now, granted, this hatch isn't electrified because I'm in a terrorist hunt and terrorist can't electrify hatches, but let's just pretend it is. Quick bit of information on hatches that not everybody knows. Every hatch in Rainbow Six Siege has a certain amount of HP. That amount of HP is 1 million HP. That's right, 1 million HP. Now, the reason why this is important in this situation is because a lot of people think that a pattern of, say, like an X on the hatch will open the hatch. It has nothing to do, when it comes to Maverick torching the hatch, it has nothing to do with the pattern that you make. You just need to make sure 1 million HP has been removed from the hatch, and that will open the hatch. One impact, or one of these, one sort of impact, as they call it, on, a, uh, on the hatch of a Maverick torch will do 87,000 damage. So you need to do 87 times, um, or however many times that goes into a million, what is it, like 12 or something? You need to do 12 different impacts to open the hatch. The best way, in my opinion, is to just do a pattern, either just straight down the line here if the hatch isn't electrified. Obviously, if it is electrified, you can't stand on it to so just go around the outside. Now, what you've got to be careful of when you're opening the hatch is getting shot from below. So if we make one line down the hatch here, and let's say we're on bank and in, in office, we can now get shot from here. So you've got to be really cautious when you're opening this hatch. I would recommend going prone because it reduces the amount of angles that your head's on display for. Now, if you see now, you know, if someone was underneath now, they're going to really struggle to find an angle to hit your head from here. Now, when you're going around the outside, as you'll see that to Maverick each hatch, it's going to take roughly two and a half full sides if you're going all the way through the hatch. Remember, there's two layers to the hatch. But that's a key thing to remember about hatches. One million HP... A Thermite Exothermic Charge will do 1 million damage. An X Kairos from Habana will do 250k, hence why it needs 4. And a Breaching Torch from Maverick will do 87,000 per impact, as they call it. The Salma, of course, will do 500,000 because they need 2 to open a hatch. But that's just a bit of information about hatches there. Um, that's the best way to open it, in my opinion. If it is electrified, go prone and go all the way around the outside, reducing the amount of uh, time that your head's on display from the holes below. So once you start playing Mav and you get good at using his torch, one of the things you're going to be able to do, which is actually a really cool and really useful trick to learn, is you're going to be able to make a rotate using only one kind of gas. I have a friend that I play Siege with named Seaway, who's a massively boosted plat too, uh, and he names this being a one-can man, and I'm a massive fan of the name, so I'm going to adopt it as well. So to be a one-can man, um, you need to be able to be quite close to the wall and be pretty fast at making the circle, because one can lasts not quite as long as you think. So let's give it a bash, hopefully we can get it done. So one can, and there's the rotate through. Job done. Really useful trick to learn for getting through places like dirt on Clubhouse just a little bit faster.
So now we're through the one-man can rotate. This terrorist has very kindly left the shield here, actually, and I can just demonstrate how easy a Mav Torch can destroy pretty much anything in the game. The odds of you actually um, Mav Torch in a shield are pretty slim, but just look how long it takes for, like, literally no time at all. You can Mav Torch pretty much anything in the game um, from shields to barricades. I don't know why you'd Mav a barricade, but you can. But there you go. It just shows how strong the torch is. You can get rid of pretty much anything. So I think we've all seen it as well, as you can actually kill people with a Mav Torch. Um, I need to just bait this terrorist into firing all seven shotgun shells. There he is. Um, there's one coming from behind. Let's try and uh, bait this guy to fire all seven again. Ah, not push me though. Right, come here, you. Hello? There we go. Now, with a downed enemy, that's obviously much faster, but you can kill people. Hello. You can kill people with a Mav Torch as well. Like I say, he's pretty much anything. I showed you before, shields, but there you go again. Pretty much anything. Mainly reinforced walls. If you ever kill someone who's not downed with a Mav Torch in a game, please send me the clip, because I can't believe that's ever happened before. I didn't realize it took that long to kill people who weren't down, to be honest, but there you go. Just a demonstration. Don't don't try and do that if you value your life. <laughs> Now, whilst we're on this site, one of the angles that I wanted to show you was once you've mav tricked the left-hand side, was how to get somebody off rafters. So once you're still playing mav and you've got that left-hand side of the wall soft, make a cut here, go rappel up here in the top right-hand corner of the wall, make a cut across, just that far in. You can now hold the top of rafters there. You can see the top of the steps on rafters there. But when you come across, you know the rotate that's going to be here. You can then hold the rotate into the corner of rafters as well. Depending where the rotate's going to be. This side of the wall is normally reinforced. The rotate's normally here. You can, uh, if even if it's not a rotate and it's just holes, you can still hold that as well. But you can hold top garage there. And you can hold this angle here, which is a really, really strong angle. Because it's not very often someone's going to fire back at you there from rafters. Okay, so a quick angle I'm going to show you on Oregon with Maverick. I'll throw a drone through here just quickly to show you the angle that they're going to be holding on the other side. So very often you'll get a defender boosted up onto this box, holding an angle from here. His head's going to be in line with the top of this window frame, but it's going to be somewhere on the sort of one ping. So what you want to do first is make a line here with Mav. Now this is not for peeking through. However, once you've made a hole, the first place they're going to look at is that hole. If you peek the first hole you make, you're going to get domed. Don't do that. Then make three more holes. That's just the pattern I always make without fail. What you want to do is, whilst you're doing that, you want a teammate. You can't really do this on your own, because you need to be mapping the wall, obviously, and you can't do both things. You want a teammate up on this green rafter, and to be prone on this sort of angle here. The box that you're looking at is, is literally right there, where the guy's head's going to be. So whilst you're doing these holes, he's up here, or she's up here, holding that angle. Okay? Once you've made those holes, maybe make this one a bit further to the left, but obviously this wall's reinforced. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. At the very top, make a line across like so and as you're making the line your teammate who's going to be peeking that box should have an absolute freebie i don't know if you can just see the box the box is there in blue but once you go prone this is exactly where their head's going to be once they're playing on that box if nobody's playing on the box from the very same angle you can go across to the middle of the beam in line with where the hole is obviously be careful because if you fall down there you're going to take damage go prone and as you can see the end of pit is right there if anyone's playing the end of pit, you can even just give the information, but if you can make the shot, obviously make the shot. Just be careful being prone on this beam, because if you go any further back, you fall off. I thought you were going to take damage then, but you don't. But there you go. I just learned something there. I thought you took damage coming off there. But yeah, from there, you can see down to pit. It's a really, really strong angle right at the top of the wall. So still on Oregon, there's another angle you can get from closet. It's a bit more, um, not as not as free, if you want to use that phrase, this one. So what you want to do is use this coat rack to step up slightly. You'll see once you go up, you see them going up there. And you want to see this black mark here and this black mark here. You want to get a line between the two. Just like so. Now, initially, if you're on the other side of that wall, you don't have to worry about that, um, that line. You think, well, I'm safe from there anyway. However, once you step up onto the coat rack, you can actually get an angle into the attic so if you're over in attic and you see that line you don't have to worry about it you think because you think well that's too high i can't see anyone's head through there no one's that tall you don't have to worry about that however once you step up onto that coat rack you can see through it obviously from here it's you know nowhere near big enough to look through step up onto the coat rack and you get an angle onto attic don't just make this one line because they've only got one place to look at 
make a line uh, or a, a line across here or something. Obviously, don't do it right where you're going to be standing because you're going to get a shot there as well. But make a line here, make a line, a, a dot here and a dot there and a, and a get another can and a dot here and a dot there or something. Make it so they've got other things that they need to worry about apart from the one where you're going to be. Um, you don't just want to make one hole or one line and hold it from there because they've only got one place to have to worry about them. I really like this one. We're on chalet now and we're in the, the popular sort of pipes area. I always call this pipes. I don't know what you want to call it. It's called basement hallway apparently according to the game, but I think that extends all the way around here. So I call it pipes, uh, believe it or not, because there's some pipes. Anyway, um, there's an angle you can get here using this box. So if you're on defense and you're prepping the site, come and melee this box before you go any further. If you mav slightly higher than head height again, so you're looking at sort of like here. When you step onto this box, let me go a little bit further across. When you step onto this box, you're going to be able to see blue door. Step up. And tap right just a tad. You can now, oh, hang on. Might need to come a little bit further over. Step up onto the box. You can now get an angle on blue door. Obviously, you're going to see someone's head there. It's going to be pretty tight, but if someone's holding that blue door, you, you, know, you quite often get a defender holding this sort of angle onto this this wall which is open or onto this door holding this sort of angle there when you look at that to begin with you think oh it's too high i don't have to worry about anyone peeking that if you can step up onto this box into the corner lean right and step across a tad you're gonna just see heads there just about obviously you can make it a bit lower if you want to be on the safe side but you're definitely going to see heads on the original line we're on to Villa now. I'm going to show you three absolutely superb angles that will get you killed on Villa. So the first thing you want to do when we're in study, you can get an angle onto Vault Door. Again, this is by putting lines of sight higher up that defenders don't think they have to worry about and then using something to vault up onto to get that line of sight. So if you look at the wall here, obviously you're just going to have to remember where this is because this is going to be reinforced. But you want to be aiming just a bit higher than head height and it's along this line when it's not reinforced. But just take note of wherever that is. It's, they're usually about the same height. You know, it's usually head height and then a little bit more. Uh, but that's where you want to be. I'll get on the desk here. Obviously, you're really going to have to watch yourself from AV door. Get onto the corner of the desk. Not like this. Like this. And you can see vault door. Now, you get quite a lot of people holding vault door. Um, getting a head, a head height angle onto that is incredibly strong. And something I definitely recommend doing. Obviously, for all of these angles, you've just got to worry that your other angles that you're going to get shot from, you've got covered. The second one on Villa is, again, super, super strong. You've just got to worry that you've got a cover of, um, you've got control of 90 first. You're going to make a go head height. Look where head height is. And then a bit higher up. Going to make a line of sight there. You can step up onto this box and you can cover all the vault. But bear in mind that people can play in the vault. They can step up themselves onto this box. You'll quite often get a marshal or an Echo just sat here playing on the cams. So just be careful that you can get um, shot from there as well. But if you're quick enough, what I highly recommend doing with these line of sights, if you can do it yourself, if you're solo queuing, but if you can have a teammate here like this, and then you make the line of sight, you're going to get the kill quicker than if you do that, and then you step up, somebody might be holding you there already. So if you've got a teammate, definitely make use of that. The final one on Villa is over in Master Bedroom. Going to make a line of sight. Again, a similar height, head height, but just a little bit higher. Going to make that across this triple wall. Now that looks super high there, but don't worry, you can step up onto the bed. And you can see right the way through into Trophy. What you can see there is the deer's head, just about. It's just the front of the deer there. You can see pretty much all the Trophy there, and that's head height. So if you look at where that green window is there. And make our way over to here. You've got someone that's bang on head height. You've got someone just roaming around Trophy here, coming through the Astro Rotator, whatever it might be. You're going to get absolutely smoked. It's only a head height shot, so you've got to make sure you can't just have a long spray because you're going to have to be pretty accurate. Um, but yeah, you, you can't go wrong with these kind of angles, really. If someone looks at that from here before you've stepped up and you go, well, that's quite high. I don't think I have to worry about that. And then you step up on the bed and it's uh, it's good night. We're on to cafe now. And before I go on to every map and make a point that there's so many good lines of sight you can make with Mav, I think you're probably getting the point by now. Anything you can vault up onto when there's a reinforced wall or a popular reinforced wall on a site you're going to attack, you're going to be able to get a good line of sight on. This one is particularly good in my opinion. Make the usual height, head height, but just a little bit more. Make this all the way across to the middle here. Just like that. Now, from here, ignore this first table. You want to be up on this table, the one with the candle on, near the door. Obviously, make sure you're safe from red and from long. Jump up on this table. 
and look what you can see. Now, if normally there's a bomb there, if you're playing attacking downstairs, you're going to get someone holding behind the bomb very often. You can see that. You can see all the way into Freezer. You can see there where I'm aiming there is Freezer. And you can see the double door. So you're going to get someone who's playing and defending. Need the prep window. I know we, we normally have the bomb here. Playing prep window is looking at that going, well, I don't need to worry about that. It's way too high. Not true because I'm going to be stood on the table there. Same with the double door and same with freezer. Imagine being in freezer playing a maestro holding double door from here or wherever you're playing. And then looking over there and you get one tap by a maverick standing on a table with a line of sight. It's so, 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 so good. Obviously, the same can be said here as well. Slightly higher up. And you can go and stand on white stairs. Do it this side and you can see freezer window. I'll just whiz around quickly so you can see what I mean. It's a bit more obvious here because you, it's, it's a bit more common because you can just stand on the stairs. So you can stand on the stairs here and see freezer window. So it's the same sort of thing. And the final one, um, let's get rid of this clock ticking noise. We're not watching Hook. Uh, if you've not watched Hook, definitely watch that quality film. Um, up the Rufio. So, <laughs> so um, on this one here, we're going to be stepping on. There's a lamp here that you can see I've smashed. You smash the lamp out. You can step onto this table and get a line of sight into freezer. It's not as strong this because you're super, super close to the wall. So it's, it's pretty obvious, but make a line of sight. This wall is usually reinforced. Up up here and you, there's a rotate that's going to be there or there. You're going to be able to see into deep freezer. And you're going to be able to see into, uh, which is here. You're able to see on the line of sight. You see a little bit of cocktail as well. A really strong line of sight. Just get creative with them. Now we have it. That's Maverick summed up for me. I think he should be taken every round, as I said earlier on. I think he's super strong. His loadout and his utility is absolutely unbelievable. Now, if you like the video today, do me a favor, sub to the channel, like the video. It costs you absolutely nothing, as I said earlier. However, if you want to see a specific operator in the next video, drop it in the comments below. The only reason I did Maverick this time is because someone said they wanted Maverick. So give us a shout if you want a specific operator. My socials are down in the corner as well. I stream on Twitch four days a week, so you can catch me there as well. That pretty much sums it up for this time. But thanks very much, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.